Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And my name is Miley Fu, and uh, with me is Hong Ying Tai, and you can call him Hai Dai. So um, we are really excited to present to you today about this session. It's called uh, uh, What's um, for the Portable AI Inference Across GPUs, CPUs, OSs, and Cloud Native Environment. So um, WebAssembly is a uh, Oh, right. So uh, a little bit about us. So um, Hai Dai is the t uh, engineering lead for um, our team. Was uh, Match is a, like um, open source um, runtime. It's like a container. It's under CNCF, Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And um, I, I am Miley Fu, and I'm also the co-chair for this uh, conference. And uh, I'm the Debra and also the um, business direction, uh, business development di director for uh, Wasm Edge, and that's our um, project GitHub link. And also, you can find us on GitHub and Twitter. So, um, yeah. So let's start uh, to talk about Wasm. So Wasm is a comparatively a young. Um, we can call it a language. So it's created in 2010, and it's firstly used in the browser. So it became uh, the W3C standard uh, in 2019, so not very long ago. And Wasm Edge was founded in um, about uh, five years ago, five, uh, yeah, about five years ago. And uh, we were accept accepted into CNCF about three years ago. And uh, um, so, this is a uh, WASM landscape we co-created with CNCF. It's um, a very comprehensive landscape about um, different um, sections uh, of WASM Edge. You can see, uh, uh, sorry, of WebAssembly. So you can see there are toolings and different projects uh, of uh, application frameworks, etc. cetera. So, um, we are, we are using WebAssembly on the server side instead of the browser. So there are different use cases like uh, microservices, uh, SaaS UDF, streaming data, embedded uh, uh, scenarios, and uh, AI inference. So um, WebAssembly has uh, really became a very hot topic. Uh, so uh, in this April, we had a very big um, KubeCon in Europe. Uh, I think uh, over uh, 12,000 people has uh, um, presented, uh, attended that conference. So um, during that KubeCon EU week, uh, WASM was uh, the top mentioned keywords on, twi on Twitter. So um, it is um, uh, like a trend. So um, also quoting uh, CNCF CTO Chris, he said that um, WASM Bind with CNCF project will be the best runtime for large language models. So um, we are using WebAssembly to run AI workloads, especially for AI inference. Um, so uh, you can uh, uh, write code in high-level languages um, like C, C++, or Rust and run it um, with native perform performance on any platform that supports WASM. And um, it's um, uh, it's created uh, for the browser. So the attributes that made uh, Wasm successful on the client side is gonna make a Wasm successful on server side applications. So um, the multi tenancy cloud would need a secure and cl cr cross platform and high performance runtime to support more than compiled um, languages like Rust, C, C++, and Go. So, um, why do we use AI for uh, Wasm for AI inference? So, um, because uh, in this age of uh, large language models, we do have a different uh, underlying environment and infrastructure uh, for AI workloads. So um, you, need, you need the cross-platform consistency, and uh, you don't want to rebuild every time when, 
rebuild your image when the uh, CUDA version or your driver version changes. Um, it's very cumbersome for developers to do that every time. So um, also, Wasm, it's, uh, it has really a small footprint. A footprint. So when, um, when you use it as a container, um, compared with a Linux container, um, it's very small. So Wasm runtime itself is like 30 um, megabytes, but, um, and also the API server, um, it, you can write it in Rust and compile it into Wasm. So it's also um, less than 20 megabytes. So together it's only um, several, uh, uh, only maybe uh, 16 megabytes or less than that. But if you uh, do that with uh, Linux containers like Docker or something, it would be um, four megabytes at least, or four gigabytes at least. And also, um, security and uh, sandboxing benefits. Uh, so um, why, uh, so what's them in cloud native environments? So today we are going to talk about how to use Kubernetes to run um, scalable AI applications and uh, use it with Docker or you can swap it with any other um, Podman or OpenShift uh, OpenShift to for containerized AI inference, and uh, it would have a lot of benefits uh, also for uh, microservices and the serverless architectures. So um, I thought we have a, a photo for this slide. So um, because we have already been integrated with different with different um, uh, tools like Kube Edge or K3S and other um, uh, other tools, and uh, we're supposed to have a graph for that, but you can find it in our documentation. So um, it will be more clear to see where what match plays in the ecosystem. Um, so um, yeah, um, so. Uh, yeah, we will have a very, uh, several demos later, so uh, you can see clearly what I'm talking about. So right now it's mostly more high-level talks, uh, so it's like um, very lightweight and uh, high performance. And uh, it doesn't only work with large language models, but also some tr more traditional um, AI models like TensorFlow, PyTorch, OnX, and others. And also, um, we do support um, text, to, text to speech and uh, stable diffusion, like text to image models as well. Um, so, um, Lama Edge is just uh, the series of AI tools built on top of Wasm Edge. And um, um, it's a, a cross platform um, portable set, so it uh, can allow you to write uh, AI applications on your Mac, and then you can deploy it across different environments, inc including uh, different GPUs, and you don't have to um, rebuild an image at all. So it's fully uh, portable, and um, uh, yeah, it's just like what's being said on these slides. So. Um, it saves you uh, energy about uh, of, of doing that. So uh, that's um, different underlying infra we supported, like um, Llama C++, the uh, LLM runtime, and the others. So um, yeah, I think I've already covered some of that. Um, and so you, with, uh, if you want to follow later to do it on your own Mac to follow our demo to do the same, you can um, run a simple command on your Mac and get a self-hosted large language model and to um, have your own um, API server to replace 
um, your OpenAI API if you have OpenAI API um, in your AI app. Oh, oh that's, uh, that's the graph I'm, I'm talking about. Um, so that's, um, so at the bottom right, that's where you run the Wasm app and um, it supports all these different kind of uh, runtimes and orchestration tools. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's demo time now. So, uh, let me get back to the, uh, this slide. I'm sorry that, because I put this graph in the wrong slide, so I cannot find it just now. And uh, the thing is that, um, Whenever you are using Kubernetes or a lot of different uh, variants, or you are using the high-level container uh, runtime such as Apartment, Docker, and all of the workload, including the Watson workload or the traditional uh, container workload, it will all pass through this level. And then, uh, at the very bottom of it, if you are running a traditional platform like the Linux ARM, um, uh, 64, then you will dispatch your workload to the uh, original way to handle it. But if you, they detect that your uh, platform or architecture is using a WASI or WASN, then you will try to you know, dispatch the whole workload into the uh, WASN application images. And so about our demo, I will take the Llama Edge, just the API server, and as our example, of course, you can change it to any uh, AI or LM agent application by yourself because uh, all of the API is is pro, uh, is pro as library, so you can you know uh, compose it with yourself. And then I will show that how to you know uh, build this uh, was an application and pack it into a container image and then publish it, run it, and deploy it on our uh, Kubernetes cluster. So, uh, for the demo one, you will, you know, if you want to uh, build or run your own Llama Edge API server, so first thing is that uh, because this project is built by Rust language, so you have to install the uh, Rust toolchain, and please make sure that you have enabled the Watson 32 Watson P1. This is the target they use to uh, compile the whole uh, application into this target, and uh, this target is just renamed in recent release. So you may see the other uh, target like the Watson 32, uh, WASI without P1. Uh, that's just the same, but we will suggest you to use P1 because that the uh, WASI will have P2 soon and they have, you know, explore very different uh, feature on that. So please make sure you choose the current one. And then you can just you know clone it and build it, and you will find that the only output is one uh, Watson file. It's called the Llama API server file. And of course, if you, you don't want to install lots of things like the Rust toolchain and do loads of these compilation tools, uh, sorry, compilation process. And of course, you can just download our you know pre-built essays from our repository. Yeah, and the whole. Demo will show that uh, the workflow is that if you are using Podman or Docker, and all of the workload we will use is to uh, dispatch that to C run. We are not using run zero or other, other runtime, we use C run. And the reason is that Watson Edge is integrated into the uh, libc ones Watson handler. So if you already you know build your own C run with the Watson Edge support, then the uh, Watson workload will be dispatched to C1, and then C1, uh, Lib C1 was Edge. Then our, our runtime will take care of that, uh, including how to you know, initialize your workload and uh, receive some hardware resources. And then uh, in this demo, we are using our you know, uh, Llama CVB backend. You will try to load a quantized model and then do the inference. Okay. So this is the whole workflow. If you are interested in how it really does, then uh, this is the process. And back to uh, how to create this, you know, this image file is pretty simple. 
uh, I believe most of the developer and users will be very happy because you don't have to, uh, you only have to write your doc file, only three lines, you know, create an empty doc file and just add a file in it. And the third line is just tell us that which what file you want to execute. Uh, the reason is that, you know, you can build an uh, image with lots of different uh, Watson file. So uh, if you have more application, just copy the second line and duplicate it to add uh, server one, add server two, blah, 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 blah. So it's pretty easy, yeah. And I believe pack and you know, publish is still easy. You know, you just, just follow this thing. Uh, please make sure you, you specify the platform is WASP1 wasn't, and the following is the tag name. So I already published that, so you can just you know download it from the desktop. So you will say, hey, everything is easy and everybody is happy, but who will cry for that? You know, the pain will not disappear; they just transfer. So if the developer and the user are happy, then who will be the you know the tough one? So, yeah, if you are maintain, you know, or you want to set up the cluster runtime for your user or your, you know, RD team, then that's the very complex. Uh, you have to install the CUDA driver uh, because that's if you want to trigger your, you know, uh, GPU, you have to do that. And you have to register the NVIDIA container uh, toolkit uh, just to make sure you are using the correct version with your driver, such as if you are using you know, CUDA 12, you have to uh, use the same version. And then you have registered it in the CDI configuration. And then, uh, all I talk about just to install the CUDA and GPU support, not including any Watson you know, thing. Then the fourth step is that you have to, you know, install the Watson library and our plugin. Then don't forget you will need C run to do that. So you know they are very complicated. But we have some, you know, uh, document so you can just step by step follow the guide. And the one is uh, the Podman part. The second is the Docker part. Also, uh, because you will rely some, you know, very new features that added in the new version. So you have to, uh, let's say, if you want to use Podman, you have to use the version after four. And if you want to use Docker, I believe it should be dot twenty six or, or or more. Uh, just check the document. Okay. Then, after you set up the whole environment, uh, you can start to run. And I know it's very complicated and you see lots of things there. The reason is that uh, CRUN don't allow us to, you know, to get the host share library. So if you want to use our plugin and if you want to trigger the, you know, the uh, CUDA library, you have to mapping it uh, just for the security issue. So you can, you know, specify which plugin or which library that you want to let the C run to know to execute. So the first one, two, three, four, five. The first five line is to talk about how we, you know, add our uh, plugin and CUDA libraries and mapping that into the uh, C run domain. And of course, because that uh, you can find our image is pretty simple. You only contain a Watson file. So if you want to, you know. Uh, run your LM, then you have to map it uh, with this command line. You know, just to uh, just to uh, grant the permission to read the uh, model file. Of course, if you say, "Hey, I have a very large registry and I have uh, you know very large storage, so I want to put the LM model just inside my image." It may be 10 or 20 gigabytes per image, but if you want, you can also do that. Then you don't need to map it. And the following two line is that we have to uh, add, talk to the C run that uh, where is our you know plugin test and which model you want to load. Just all for you know the security issue because that you have to uh, talk to him. Uh, talk to it and say, hey, uh, this this model file is what I want, and this you know plugin folder is is what we uh, map here, and 
after set up all of this environment, then don't forget if you want to use GPU, you have to specify the uh, NVIDIA GPU uh, number here and uh, switch your, your runtime to C1. Okay, oh, I have to do lots of you know, this command and you can finally run it. So let's go back to our demo here. So in the first demo that I will show is I don't use Docker or use any container. It's just a, a raw command line on your uh, system is uh, what's edge. So uh, the reason I, I use this is because you know this will have the color for information so I can uh, is, explain uh, how it really works. So when you uh, execute it and it will start to create an API server. This is uh, open AI API, uh, open AI compatible API server. So you can ask him to show the model list, ask him to do the code completion, and he will talk about, hey, uh, how many contact size I use and how many batch size I use. So if you are on, you know, on a very uh, limited resource hardware, you can reduce this value by uh, some configuration, you know, to uh, make sure that you can load your uh, LLM into your machine. And which you know, I, I'm doing this with the Lama 3, so you can find that uh, here we are using the Lama 3 uh, prompt template. Yeah, and lots of details. Okay, so the following scene is that he will talk about how many layers are already offload to the uh, GPU on uh, the remaining details. So uh, after creating that, then you can ask him some question, like uh, you can ask him, hey, I want to, you know, uh, traveling in Hong Kong, and please, uh, you know, uh, tell me uh, where to go. Then it will start the computation, and you can find that he is using the uh, CUDA host. And also, please make sure if you have, you know, very large uh, batch size value, you will have to uh, use a very large uh, VRAM to contain it. So uh, if you, you, you find that you, this program is, is uh, crashed with the OM reason, the, that's because you offload too many layers on your GPU. So here is the opt and send back to this Namage server. And you can find that it's just follow the standard that the open AI uh, provide. And here is the output of it. So this is the uh, role run to uh, run the Llama Edge server. And let's go to the you know Docker one. So with this, you, you, you will you know, set up a Docker, and then it will use the C1 to uh, execute the workload. So here you go. Because the, the color is disappeared, that's why I have to execute the previous command to to uh, you know to explain something. So uh, it's just totally the same. You will talk about uh, which uh, version is used and which you know core is used. So you can ask him the same question, or you know, uh, is someone have some question want to ask the Lama three model? Um, if not, let's ask it again. Maybe you will talk about you know, another answer for me. So this is totally the same, but just make sure that you have, you know, you have mapping this, this folder into it. Uh, I, I can show you if I forget to, to mapping something, then you will show some error message. Okay, so the output is totally not the same, but anyway, it should be some good idea if I want to, you know, travel in Hong Kong. So let me stop it, and then uh, I will try to remove some of the configuration. Hood, hood, hood. Oops. Okay. So let's see if I just, you know, remove this time. And I believe it will be talk about. Uh, we already loaded the WASM file, but we cannot figure out, you know, the 
uh, was the uh, was the unknown plugin is is important. The reason is that I just remove the uh, plugin folder, so it can grant some security if uh, your user because all of this you can you know you can set uh, by your um, management rules to avoid your user try to you know mount some very you know uh, dangerous shared library into your environment. So here is the. Oops, not this line. Uh, where, where, where? Okay. So, uh, how about Kubernetes? Uh, actually, the, the step are just the same. You have to, you know, install the driver, install the toolkit, and uh, in, install the Serum and install what's edge, all of it is just installed it. And then you have to, you know, uh, you have to write down the uh, YAML to, you know, to uh, uh, set up the uh, workload of it. So uh, let's go through this YAML file to uh, let everyone know how many uh, tricky way we have to do that. So these are pretty easy, you know, you have to uh, specify some kind, the metadata, and of course the host network or something like that. And about the container, oh, it's a little bit small, but uh, all you can see here is that we have to, you know, uh, ask the server to use which prompt you want. And of course you can, you know, you can use another way to save it. And also, uh, we have to grant the process, uh, sorry, grant the uh, permission, like you have to talk about uh, which uh, plugin file you put, where is the location, and which model you want to load it. And you will say, hey, this is not you know, very uh, Kubernetes way. The reason is that uh, while I have to you know, uh, set the environment file here, and if I want to scale up, then should I duplicate it all for the resource here? The answer is uh, at the current stage, yes, I'm sorry about that, because we are still fixing some you know, uh, file system issue, so you have to you know, uh, prepare all of the file on your, uh, on your each node and to specify this, you know, this environment variable. And you have to install all of the plugin and models you know, in uh, the related, uh, related location. Then, don't forget to mount your valent, and which is, uh, for here, is that I use some plugin in our, you know, in our WhatsApp folder, and then I map in some of the model from the current folder to that. And I have to say, sorry about that, because I just, you know, broke all of the cluster setting on my cluster this morning, so I cannot <laughs> give you a live demo of Kubernetes, because I just, you know, Broke it, uh, but we. Uh, I'm very happy that I, I I set up a CI before, so you can you can check the log here, and here is the the outputs of the the files, and I I, I will try to fix it. Maybe you can uh, go to find me tomorrow, and if I can, you know. My class back, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, this comment is just the the comment I, I use on this uh, in this slide, and it just said uh, sorry, it may be very small. So it just set all of the criteria here, and it will start the server. And you you can find these these messages different from our previous demo is because that uh, we we are not update this image, so this is the old style of it. And after uh, we update it, it will show just the same output in the previous demo. So here is it creates a, a workload on the uh, cluster. And of course, you can add some load balancer so you can dispatch the uh, AI inference workload to this API server. And of course, if, if you find this you know, workload is already uh, tag all of the resources, you can create you know, more and more instance for that. And here is the output. I believe we are asking, sorry, uh, why is the question we ask? It looks like very large. So after you set up the 
the cluster and with the Kubernetes, we ask three, uh, we query three uh, uh, HTTP ports. One is that we get all of the models. Uh, it, in our uh, demos, we just load one models. The reason is that, sorry, my uh, GPU is uh, GTS uh, 1080. It's pretty small, so I cannot load memory model into it. But you have uh, H100 or uh, 1419. You can have more and more uh, model in, inside that. So you can query all of the models, and you can you know, use the check compilation or call compilation. Let's uh, just use it as a compiler or something like that. And the uh, uh, question here is we ask who is Robert Oppenheimer, and here is the output from a response from the uh, uh, Lama Edge server. So uh, this is the uh, of the demo. And yeah, we are still working on it. So uh, we will update the Kubernetes uh, instructions. So it will let you to reduce some workload and cost to execute it. And uh, is it your turn? Okay. And we have some you know, challenges and, and future directions is that um, uh, this is a very young you know, uh, ecosystem, so you can find that uh, lots of step looks very hacky and in not very you know, useful for the DevOps people. The reason is yes, yes, we are still working on it, but the learning curve is very uh, low because all you, all you need to know is, hey, I compile a single file and just put it into the image. The remaining thing is that we just set up lots of other things, but we believe that we can have a, a operator or we can have a you know, one liner script to install all of the dependency uh, easier. And we are, you know, we are supporting more and more uh, infrastructure right now. Uh, just like we talked about before, we support CUDA, we support Metal, and we believe we will, you know, uh, leverage more and more uh, hardware like MPU or you know uh, the AMD RCM framework. Yeah, and we are calling for the contributors. If you are uh, maybe we don't maybe we don't have student in this room, but we have lots of programs like LFM mentorship and Google Summer Call. Of course, if you are interested, you can just go go to our issue board and pick up any interesting uh, ideas to implement it. And here is our you know our old links. The the first one is the was Edge, the second one is the Llama Edge, and we have some uh, Rack API server demo. If you are interested, you can check the uh, Guyanet AI. And this is my final slide. That's you know all of the QR code link, and you can find uh, me and Miley uh, via uh, Twitter or GitHub. So that's all of our presentation, and uh, it's Q and A time. Uh, yes.这个拉玛一直它是一个跨平台的一个程序嘛，但是我想知道就是它底层用的那个推定引擎，我看是拉玛CPP。但这个拉玛CPP推定引擎它是一个C语言，它其实是平台相关的。那所以在我们打包的时
你你打包的任何的过程里面是不需要牵扯到跟平台有关的。那就是 Lama CP， 那那 Lama CP 这个二进制它是怎么使用的？是通过挂载挂载到容器里，然后直接去调用，还是？不，它是透过呃，我们现在解法是透过，就是我刚才讲的，你需要 mapping 那个 plugin，、哦、就是我们刚才那个 plugin 就是从后设 mapping 进去。对。啊、哦，明白了。我们还有其他的问题吗？ You can always find us at the sponsor booth.、Uh, we have a sponsor booth at the showcase、uh, solution、uh, pavilion. You can find us there and talk to us if you have more questions. Okay. If we don't have any other question, then let's finish here. Thank you, everyone.